Welcome back to the Tracy Trendy Show, my lovelies. Another day, another dollar. And we got more some cons because love during lockup is locked down with the con. All right, my loves, this episode peeled off all the layers. It went you know, it went to Connery on steroids. Okay, my loves, on steroids. First off, we have a big, 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 big bird named Shanta. All right? She's dating a man named True. So Shanta and True. Now, loves, here we go again. Now, this man has stacked some time in the pokey. He's been in there for 12 and a half years. And we got another woman who's just a little insecure. Or is she just running a catfish gang? I don't know. But uh, she surely spent $30,000 on them. That's no catfish there. $30,000 is real. Now she spent it all on him. When she should have spent it on her kids or maybe the restaurant that she wants to one day have. Either one would have been fine with me. Either way, it would be fine with me. But no, my loves, no, can't be that easy. She has to stack $30,000 on a man that she never met, never laid eyes on him. Okay, that's like going to casino. That's a gambling addiction. I mean, for real, because you're going in there blind, hoping it's going to pay off. Now, and you only go put, you only got one horse in this race, one. You know, you can't even hedge your bet. You got to put it on one little con, 30 Gs. That's crazy. But she knows it's all going to be worth it when he comes out. Now, we've known all our OGs have been watching this series, Love After Lockup, Love During and Life After Lockup. We all have seen these birds saying the same exact thing. But this one here, she doubles down and put her house up for sale, buys another one, just for this man she hasn't seen. Now she's paying double mortgage. Two. That's uno, dos. While she waits for a man who thinks she is ghetto. Yet he's the one in the pokey. Hello, he's the one. Make it make sense. Now this con has never, on top of all of this, and she knows this, never dated a black woman. But he's willing to date and use a black woman that he's never laid eyes on on top of that. Now, I wonder once he gets out of the pokey, you know, is he going to switch up and revert back to what it, you know, to his regular preference, his real preference. I'm just saying. We will see. Okay? I'll put $30,000 on that bet. Moving on to Andrew. And the bet is, no, no, go. The bet is he going to get to step in. Andrew and Candace. Now. Nah. This is like Sean and, and, and what's her name? Destiny. And this is like mm, Brittany and Andrew, another Andrew. Or and he went by Andy. So we have a lot of guys who are just laying it down. They're being sponsors or sugar daddies. I guess when they're close in age, they're just sponsors. But if they're older, they'll be a sugar daddy. But anyway, Andrew buys you know this, what he thinks is designer goods. I don't know about that Louis bag because it breaks with a little... With a pool. I mean, if it was legit, he can go right back to that store and get his money back or exchange it. But I think, I think Andy's been duped. I don't, I see duster bags, but I don't see the box. You would think he would keep it in the box. Now, then this chick, you know, she's running real game. Now she said on her profile, her dating profile, that she's Willing to relocate. She's opening up to all the little suckers in the United States of America and anywhere outside there, too. She's opening it up. Willing to relocate. She don't care where it is. But as soon as she gets to talking to Andy or Andrew, she starts saying, well, I'm going to kind of wait and hang out in Vegas and see an ah, 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 ah. All right. And he's like, wait, 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 wait. He doesn't tell her that. But he just talks to the camera and says that she never said that on a profile but in the meantime he's lugging all this expensive shit in his truck he's paying for all this mortgage and that's crazy and uh you know what he goes out there and honks his horn out there at the prison site and i'm like loves <laughs> this is interesting little tidbit 
This is the first prison on the show that I've actually seen with my own two eyes. Because when I would go up to Vegas all the time, that's where, you know, if you look out in the, out in the distance, in the dusty desert, it's the hot desert, that's where this prison is, you will see the prison. Okay, moving on to Joey and Michael. Joey comes from a good family. Joey wants to prove to his family that Michael is the sh, you know? So, you know, Michael agrees to this little meet and greet. And after it's all said and done, you know, his mom is feeling like two addicts shouldn't be together, which is true. Mom is making a lot of sense. And um, his dad asked him, how much did you put on the books? That's what everybody should ask all these birds. How much do you put on the books? And Joey said he spends $50 a week on, on the books. To me, that seems reasonable. But, you know, I wouldn't shit your asses in jail. You get more than what I, you're guaranteed to get more than what I got. You're guaranteed to get three hots in a cot. So I'll keep my $50. But that's the 50 is on the low end, considering how Shanta is dropping money on this fool. But um, I guess that's an incentive to get Michael to do the meet and greet. And um, uh, another note, I want to say Sharp must have been really listening to the viewers because this scene with Joey and the family and how he's been, you know, how they were affected by his addiction and you know, thinking he's they're gonna lose him over his overdose and all that. You know, they're going, they're peeling the layers and they're getting less sensational and more deeper into the storylines than, you know, I guess because of other cast members that are no longer with us. Moving on to Teeny and Rob. Now Teeny has a talk with Rob, and Rob decides out of the blue that he wants, well, he's coming out soon, I guess, and he wants Teeny to make up with his mom. Kate reconcile their differences, but Kate shares that she's not fond of Teeny because she's all up in her feelings over the what the whole thing was years ago, and what was fighting over was five hundred dollars. Do you think that's worth your relationship with your son over five hundred dollars? You know, I would. You know, but basically, Rob was a wimp. He should have been the one to say, "Mom, it was me." Apparently, he agreed to give his mom $500. Tinny was supposed to give her the money. Then he, then she does or whatever. And he tells her, wait, take that money back. And that's the end of it. But I'm like, why would you need the $500? You're in prison. But it's finally revealed how he gets his money, allegedly, supposedly, that the brother and he, they have a business. And they're really successful. Hmm, I wonder what kind of business. But anyway... I would think if they got their successful five hundred dollars wouldn't mean too much for your mom. I'm saying, come on now. But um, you know, uh, Teeny goes off. You know, she says, "Fuck this," you know, men defensive with Mama when she up there bringing up his ex girlfriend. I ain't got time for that. Mm. All right. So moving on to Ayana and Jamal. Now, in a couple of days, Ayana has to go to court. Now, she's facing anything from two weeks to three months. And, you know, she's all up in her feelings and she's trying to get the lesser, you know, sentence. So she started anger management to help with her case. And then, you know, the layers are peeled back. She talks about her childhood, don't have a daddy and da, 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 da. But she also goes in on how hard it is being a single mom and how she has to do everything by herself. Everything falls on her shoulders. And I wonder why, because she picking these bums, she up there lined up another bum. If she wants an easier life, then she's gonna have to do something differently. And so anyway, she cries at the anger management and it's good that they show the, the cast members in counseling. So anyway, my loves, you know, at this part of the show, we're going to talk about the winners and the losers. Now, I'm glad they didn't put too many on too many couples on this episode. The last two episodes have been pretty cool and easy to manage. So I'm going to keep doing the winners and losers. Now, Shanta and True, it's easy to figure out who is the winner. The man who ain't got to see no woman and collect $30,000, sign me up. Where do I get a sponsor? Where do I get a sugar daddy? So, I mean, sugar daddy means you got to give some sugar or whatever to the baby's got to pay the sugar daddy. Uh-uh. 
No, this man gets $30,000 for nothing. Just phone conversations. Then, and so, so let's say True is winning. Andrew and Candace. Again, Candace is winning. The con is winning. Because, you know what? She gets her rent paid for and everything. Once She's got her life set once she steps out of those prison doors. And Michael, he gets $50 every week. He's winning too. So, And as well as Candace, Michael's winning because you know what? He doesn't have to see Joe. He just shows some face on the video call. And there you go. You get $50 every week. So, so Michael's winning. And Teeny and Rob. Rob is the shot caller. Teeny, his soldier. So Rob is the winner, as usual. And, and Yana and Jamal. This one's easy, too, because Jamal, he's getting out of prison. And, and Yana's about to step up in the pokey. So as you see, my loves, the con won again this week. A whole sweep. Whole sweep. Cons. All right, my loves. You know what you got to do at this point. Subscribe if you have not subscribed because you're not going to get this commentary anywhere else. No, 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 no. So when you see that notification, you click on it, watch it, drop a line so we can discuss what we all saw with our own two eyes. Okay, my loves, and I'll catch you all out on the flip side.